Welcome back to the hardest NCAA football rebuild challenge on YouTube, where last year I proved that defense wins championships as I took the Iowa Hawkeyes to their first national title without running a single offensive play. It was probably the craziest season in college football history as we had some truly thrilling finishes that included last second kick returns, a devastating quadruple overtime loss in the Big Ten championship game to Ohio State, followed by multiple nail-biter wins in the college football playoffs. We return almost every player from last year's ridiculous defense, including star free safety Emmanuel Turner, who caught over 50 interceptions on his way to winning the Heisman last year. With the best defense that college football has ever seen, we'll see if we can truly build Iowa into a powerhouse with no offense. So in our opening game of the season, we're taking on 99 overall, number two Notre Dame. We are somehow unranked coming off a national championship win, and our Heisman winning free safety drops his first pick. That would have been a real nice way to start it out, but we get a nice swat on third down. Richard Amos coming up with the play there, and he's back here on punt return. He's gonna have to do some cooking to get out out of here and Notre Dame covers that up well. As the defense only rules state, we will be kicking on first down. I'll be honest, I don't like the feel of this game so far, man. Notre Dame has a scary team and they're one of these run heavy squads too, so it's going to be kind of tough to get picks. We bottled up this Notre Dame run pretty well in the playoffs. They're getting it cooking early against us, so we head to the second quarter knotted at zero. We'll have a big time third and long here. Notre Dame at the edge of field goal range and they just dump it off. So we'll see what this kicker's got. I'm going to try to block this with Richard Amos. If he is not able to get to it, that kick is going to be good. Good. This is definitely going to be a tough game. We'll see what Amos can do on the kick return, and he has some space. But these Notre Dame defenders are quick, dude. The returner of the year is going to have to be even better because our kicker doesn't have quite the same range, but that is a beautiful punt. So Notre Dame going to be pinned back at the two. They're just going to run here. We cannot give up a big play. Rel Johnson just has that ball carrier vision to make really dangerous cuts, and he just decides to get up here, picking up the first down. This is actually maybe the worst possible matchup for us in week one. As Emmanuel Turner has a shot at the pick there, but can't quite hop for it. That's my bad there. I need to strafe up just a little bit better. And we really need to stop before halftime here. They're going halfback angle and Emmanuel Turner able to hop to pick that off. We'll see if he can take this to the house, man. The Heisman winner getting his first touchdown on the year and it's a big one. So we take the lead right before halftime. Notre Dame just going with another out route here. Crowell had a chance at the pick. Nice little click on spoiled by our number one cornerback. It's on third down. Notre Dame going with a counter and they'll pick that up. This Notre Dame team is like a legit 99 overall squad. They're definitely more dangerous than the team we played in the playoffs last and year. They have a chance to take the lead before halftime and that's a beautiful tackle from Hurst. Probably would have been a touchdown otherwise and Notre Dame is mismanaging the clock here. They're just going to have one play before halftime and Richard Amos snatches that out of the sky. He's hoping he have a chance to take that back but he gets tackled. Still a huge play from number seven as I was stuck on the D line man. We had to have clinging on to this four point lead. Well I have the strangest feeling that this game is going to come down to the wire. Turner laying his first big hit of the season on that play taking out the quarterback's legs. I'm surprised dude got up after that one. And Richard Amos going to get another shot at a return here. He's had a very solid day at cornerback so far. Hasn't been able to get anything cooking in the return game, but this is the most space he's had all day. He will get near the 40-yard line. But time to test out the kicker's range. This is from 59, and that is going to be wide right. Don't think it had the distance anyways. This guy's definitely a downgrade from what we had with Drew Stevens. And now the Irish with good field position. They're going to break off a big run. This Johnson dude is just so dangerous. I knew it was only a matter of time. So the Irish get on the board. A killer touchdown. You're going to need a stop on this third down for sure. We'll see what Notre Dame cooks up for us. Looks like they are just going to hand it off, but that's kind of dangerous, as you know. We really need Richard Amos to cook here, especially considering our field goal has a shorter range. He's going to try the back juke magic. Notre Dame's defenders have a little bit more discipline than what we're used to, but we are going to get into field goal range. We will not this game up going into the fourth. So here we go, man. Just over two minutes left. Looks like Notre Dame's sticking with the run game. Absolutely cannot give up any big plays here. That is a very clever play call. Richard Amos somehow misses the tackle twice on one play. Honestly though, was still a pretty nice effort to slow dude up. But unfortunately, he gets cooked on third down and that's going to be a huge game. This team just cannot tackle right now, man. I don't know what's going on. Really not looking like the team that we coached to the Natty last year. Definitely not looking like a 99 overall defense. And now Notre Dame is just running their clock down, playing for the field goal. It's going to take a miracle to get a win at this point, but a big hit from Cameron there is helpful. And it looks like Notre Dame is going to try to pass forward on third down. This is our chance boys we absolutely need a pick and he tries a manual turner who sticks out one hand to get it i don't know why notre dame went so aggressive there all right so here it is notre dame just going five wide dumping it off to the tight end but a nice tackle all we got to do is swat this down to send things to overtime notre dame quarterback just chucking that up deep and we do indeed swat it away you're gonna have extra time here in this season opener and remember in overtime we get a turnover we win the game we give up a touchdown we pretty much automatically lose big tackle for loss there to start us 
out so nice. Here's where we have our chance to get a pick. Second and 14. Notre Dame just going speed option here, though. Need a tackle, and we get it. All right, so third and 12. We'll see what we got here. Looks like Notre Dame's going to go with the flood route. Emmanuel Turner has a shot at the pick, but can't hop for it. I should have played that better. I'm in a small adjustment here. Putting Andy Lee in for the field goal block. That is going to make its way through, though. We are just going to have to kick the field goal to tie this thing we'll up. We'll start out the second overtime with another field goal. So here we go, man. Need a pick or a field goal miss. And Notre Dame trying the bounce off route. We had a dude right there, but he's not able to make a play. The defense is going to have to come up with a goal line stand. On first and goal, Notre Dame just hands it off. We need Frederick to make a tackle, and he does emphatically. So second and goal. We'll see if they go run again. They're going to go read option. And this time it is Cameron coming up with a tackle. So here we go. Third and goal. I'm going to go to the quarters package. Notre Dame just going with a verts look, and we get the sack. Let's go. That is as clutch as it gets from the defense. We are headed to a third overtime. We certainly have quite the game on our hands in week one. And that's a little corner route action. Emmanuel Turner is on it, boxing up the bounce route. But they throw the comeback to Amos. Amos misses the tackle, and dude is going to score. An absolutely ridiculous play from Notre Dame. Emmanuel Turner played really well today, trying to keep his team in the game. But there were just a lot of holes in our tackling and coverage that I wasn't expecting. But after the crushing week one loss, we're taking on a UCLA team that also happens to sport a 99 overall offense. Obviously, losing in week one wasn't ideal, but it was to the number two team in overtime. So I feel like we can bounce back and Emmanuel Turner coming up with his first pick of the day. I still strongly feel that this team has a great chance to win the college football playoff. We just got to take care of business against Big Ten opponents. And we're getting a solid pass rush to start this game. I do feel like Notre Dame was just a terrible matchup for us to have in week one. As Frederick had a chance at a pick six there. Our season is obviously going to look pretty bleak if we lose to UCLA today. As Richard Amos getting a chance at his first return. Couldn't really get loose last game. But he has some space on this play. Gets absolutely sat down though. Another play where I probably should have utilized the juke move. We head to the second quarter of this game. Deadlocked with UCLA. Needs somebody to make a play. And Emmanuel Turner is the man for the job. Absolutely insane pick. And he will of course take it to the bank. The team hasn't been perfect this year. But Emmanuel Turner has not missed a step. He is definitely still primed to win another Heisman. And UCLA absolutely serving him up here with a halfback screen. Running back trips him up though. Probably should have tried to dive or hurdle or something. But we will take a 10 point lead. Turkey bowing down to Emmanuel Turner. But just like that, we're looking real good in this one. UCLA's quarterback looks flustered, and Turner will track him down for a sack. Turner just carrying the team right now. But on second and long, UCLA going five wide and dialing up an absolute dime. We need to start just running the quarters package when we see that five wide. UCLA just going with another screen here. Dude just chucks it out of bounds. How is that not intentional grounding, by the way? For some reason, the CPU has this rule where they can just throw it away whenever they want. But UCLA's play calling continues to be weak. Cameron getting the big hit in the backfield. He's been really really solid so far today. And he actually hurt the UCLA running back on the play. We love to see that. Is Richard Amos getting another chance to cook before halftime here? Unfortunately, UCLA has just been hawking him down all day. We are looking beautiful going into halftime though. 10 to nothing lead feels great. And UCLA going toss to start out the half. Frederick just continues to be really solid. I didn't really know what to expect from Frederick, but he's been the impact player that we really needed to replace Wampa. And UCLA just going with this cheese play on another third and seven, but the pass rush hits. That is Hurst with the sack. That is just such a a good last name for a linebacker man we'll see if amos can finally get loose here he's really been struggling in the return game but this might be it he's just gonna have the punter to beat as he goes down the sideline cuts it back in and takes it to the crib giving us a big time three score lead let's go perky getting tossed around in the crowd barring anything crazy here we're just trying to get some nice looking stats ucla has a 99 overall offense and we're making them look like absolute trash crowd getting his first pick on the day there crowd continuing to just be really solid i'm kind of thinking of switching him and Amos' positions. Boy's just been slightly more consistent in terms of getting picks. Let me know what you think in the comments, man. Should we have Crowler Amos in that left side corner position? I'm very interested to see what UCLA's total yardage is because it feels like they have not moved the ball at all. Okay, yeah, so look at this, man. Overall, UCLA only has 128 yards of offense. This has got to be one of the most dominant defensive games I've ever played, and they decided to try Crowl again. Crowl getting an insane one-handed pick, and the boys are hyping him up. Yeah, I'm gonna say Crowl deserves that second cornerback spot, man. This game has been over for a while, but we're just trying to get one more pick. Why not add to those Emmanuel Turner Heisman stats? Very easy dub. As Turner balled out with four picks and two sacks. And I'm going to go ahead and make this change. We will switch around Crowell and Amos just to see what happens. You know, Emmanuel Turner is staying at the top of the Heisman watch, of course. So after the big win, we are taking on ISU. We've mostly dominated in this dynasty, but they have been steadily improving these last few years. Chase Brackney going to start it out with a sack, but ISU starting out aggressive, going for it on fourth and four. 
four. And this quarterback just has a year in the pocket. They are going to pick that up. Not the best start for this defense, man. We could potentially be in trouble here. As the quarterback's trying to take off there, Cody Freeman absolutely kills him. Look at this hit from our DN, dude. That's why we got to have a fumble on, especially in the rain, man. And I don't want to just hold him to a field goal. I'm trying to get a turnover on this play. But ISU clearly does not want that. They just go with the handoff. They're just going to take their three points here. Emmanuel Turner almost blocking that. So a good job from our defense to at least hold the clowns to a field goal. Need to keep them pushed back in their own territory here. They're just going with the run on third down. Very, very weak, and we stuffed that up. All right, we need Richard Amos to cook here. After his big play last game, I'm hoping he can keep it moving, and he has great position here. Just got to make a few men miss, and he is down the sidelines with a shot to crib this. Going to get around the 20. Nice that he's coming to his own on those returns, making things easy on our kicker. But we do have a little bit of a dogfight against Iowa State. We got to bag him up before halftime. And we are going to move to the quarter package here. ISU quarterback panicking and Cody Freeman having a great day so far. All right, now we just got to make sure nothing stupid happens. He's just going to take off again, getting pretty close to field goal range. But it looks like these guys are just going for the Hail Mary. And the noodle armed quarterback not even able to get it there. We head into halftime, nodded at three. Seems like it's going to be all about stopping the run this half. Oh, but ISU is running this formation. We should have a chance to bait this up. And Crow plays it perfectly, but drops it, bro. I put you in that spot to catch pitch. Very frustrating. Would have been a game changing play and they serve Turner up with the screen. He drops another pick six. I don't know what's going on with this defense. Must be the rain. Richard Amos just needs to get in field goal range here, but he cannot. And at this point, I fear this game has upset written all over it. But ISU finally makes the mistake we needed them to make. Throwing it right to Turner. Like, what are you doing, bro? They've barely thrown the ball, but we take advantage finally. All right, so we're looking much better now in control of this game. And Eric Ward sitting that dude down. Looked like he may have paralyzed him. Another game where the other team is scarcely moved the ball on this defense. He's going to have all day in the pocket. That's the one bad thing about the quarters package. But thankfully, we finally get some pressure. That is the definition of a coverage sack. And this punter is very, very weak. Not nearly up to Iowa caliber. And Richard Amos hitting the back juke here. He might have a shot to take it to the crib. All he's got to do is outrun a couple dudes. And he does. Amos trying to prove that he should not have been moved out of that top position. Man has been a playmaker in these last two games. And Herky's going crazy. Hitting the push-ups. Even hitting the clap in the middle. Oh my god. This is starting to look like a typical Cyhawk game. And Keeter just absolutely laying it down on the receiver. These are the plays we like to see, punishing Iowa State for even daring to come on the same field as this defense. And they will give Turner a free pick. Take this to the bank, young buck. That Heisman campaign looking real good right now. This game started off looking scary, but now we're looking like a national title team once again. I wish we didn't schedule Notre Dame for week one, because I feel like if we played him again, we would absolutely cook him. And Michael Crowell making up for his earlier job with a beautiful pick down the sideline. The defense is starting to gel just like last year. This team is looking to be in postseason form already. As ISU just trying the Hail Mary and Frederick will get his first pick of the day. Glad to see Frederick getting his. He's been great so far. We get out of there with a pretty easy dub. As the Emmanuel Turner pick six is on the screens and the Amos kick return or what was big today. We get our first insta commit in Ryan Conception who's an 80 overall D tackle. The recruiting class is overall looking really solid. I've been focusing on D linemen and linebackers in this one and we should be stacked for years to come. This is going to be a big visit week for us against Purdue. So we'll see what we can do against this Purdue team who we've dominated in the past. And Purdue just going screen here. Emmanuel Turner is on that all day. But Richard Amos going to have beautiful field position for this first return. And this Purdue punt return team is looking slow. We need one block. We're to the outside. Going to try to cut it back in, but we go down at the 20. Going to be able to get a field goal out of this though. As I should mention, we're ranked for the first time this season in this game, which is absolutely wild considering we won the Natty last year. But Purdue moving the ball on us early. They are one of the most pass first offenses in the Big Ten, which is a big part of why I like playing them because we always rack up crazy stats against these dudes. They are kind of putting together a drive here. Gotta make sure we shut this down. They're going with bounce routes. And Emmanuel Turner just making a great play to get a paw in there. That is a completion 99% of the time. And they're trying Eric Ward here. Our new slot corner makes a nice play to swat that away. He definitely has been above average in that tough position, I think. We'll see. Normally when I say that, dude gets cooked on the next play. After a nice punt, we got Purdue pushed back. Gotta take advantage of this. And they just threw it right into coverage. Keep just gotta pick that off, man. On third down, Purdue's just gonna run. Just gotta make sure we lock this down. And another nice play from Eric Ward there. He's hyped up. All right, Richard Amos, we got to take this to the bank. I am not trying to play a close game against Purdue. We got to get around this corner here, dude. Barely 
really pushes us out. We are able to take a three-point lead there. We got to extend this lead. Purdue going with a stick play here, and Emmanuel Turner is there for that. He's been picking that off all season, and some crafty running is going to get him into the end zone there. Notice the nice block from Eric Ward. The Iowa fans are hyped up. You got to love them doing the chest paint to say win. Those are some guys who know what football's all about right there. Richard Amos is going to swat this away. It gets batted around, and somehow Emmanuel Turner picks this off. Nobody on the planet apart from Emmanuel Turner is making this play, man. Look at that. Dude just snatched it right off the ground. So we'll take a nice 13-point lead here. If I make this field goal, goddamn, I almost shanked that. I keep forgetting that this kicker does not have a boom for a leg. And Purdue's just chucking it up here before halftime. Richard Amos has it. It looks a little bit dangerous, but he's going to have a chance to return it here, too. Our star returner is going to go ahead and get this in field goal range, trying to make some more out of it, too. All right, man. This is the Iowa team I like to see. Everybody's making plays. As much as I like to see Emmanuel Turner get in the stats, it's good to see it when the other boys get involved. And Purdue looking pretty bummed going into halftime here. Probably a no cameras in the locker room type situation. Oh, we got a little little Nissan ad here. See, I never wait to see this long enough. I'm always surprised when it comes up. You gotta wonder how much did Nissan pay to have their ad in this video game? They've definitely gotten some good mileage out of it because people still play this. Purdue is just chucking it up into coverage at this point. Eric Frederick has really got to make that pick, bro. As good of a tackle as he is, he does not exactly have great hands. And goddamn, Purdue has way too much time in the pocket, hitting that bounce off, jetting off the sideline. It is going to take something truly wild for us to lose this game, though, and Emmanuel Turner just reading that perfectly, getting his third pick on the day. That gives us a three-score lead and hopefully puts this game away. I love these games where we can just play for stats. Purdue going play action here, and Emmanuel Turner with maybe one of the sickest picks of his career. He just catches those with one hand like no other, and this is like not a creative player, guys. Emmanuel Turner is just an otherworldly recruit. Something about that 6 5 -ness. Turner just gets the craziest animations I've ever seen. Coming up with a free sack there, why not? Turner has a lot of sacks this year. Seems like he's an absolute lock for the Heisman this season. Really should be a two-time winner already. And that's Eric Ward forcing the fumble. He's just had a spectacular day today. Something about Purdue, man. We always put up the big points against these kids. This defense would just be an absolute nightmare for a quarterback to play against. You never get a break, man. The other team just keeps punting it back to you, and you just have to keep tossing up interceptions to them. Corrales proved that decision to move into the number two cornerback slot right for the most part. But just another day in Kinnick Stadium, man. Emmanuel Turner getting another four pick. I should mention it, man. We're playing with even shorter quarters this year. And Emmanuel Turner just still putting up these wild stats. After that performance against Purdue, pretty much the whole class commits. So here we go, boys. One of the biggest games of the season. We got number six, Utah, and their halfback already looking dangerous. Definitely a tough matchup. This game has some Notre Dame vibes. But the safety duo getting in the backfield, big time tackle. And Utah is really going to punt this away, bro. We'll see if Richard Amos can cook from his own end zone. He's been on a hot streak in the return game. Game. Seeing some more athletes on the field today, but he might have a shot. Number 40 gets him, though. If he didn't get caught there, man, I don't know. We're punting the ball here, though, and it hits off of dude's head. Somehow, Utah's gonna recover this. And just like that, they have even better field position than they did before. They're just refusing to pass the ball, man. The Utes have come in with a clear game plan, which is don't let Emmanuel Turner touch the ball. Our linebackers are gonna have to step up today. We gotta play great run defense. I and mean, when we get these third downs, we cannot get cooked that bad. A big third and nine coming up here. This is not a game where we can afford to give up a first half touchdown. And Utah quarterback has all day just dumping it off, but a great tackle from Keeter to push him out of bounds. Alright, so Utah gonna start things out with a field goal. Emmanuel Turner has been really close to blocking a lot of these. It's funny because in this dynasty, the conservative offense has become super dangerous. Opportunities for picks are extremely limited, but we get one there. Emmanuel Turner coming down with it. I clicked off because I thought he had no chance of catching it, and this is where things get really dangerous. The amount of times I've seen running back break off 99 yard runs is crazy but utah surprisingly going play action pass here and somehow they get that in only five pass attempts for the utah quarterback today and we just cannot guard those comeback routes if i'm an opposing team against us bro i am running the ball almost every play and when i need to i'm running those comeback routes utah's quarterback is just gonna chuck it up here emmanuel turner ranges over but not able to make the play and utah running off some clock this might be the last play of the half and they are chucking it up to cameron he is gonna have a shot to crib this just got to outrun the tight end and he will by far the biggest play of Cameron's career. That is exactly what this team needed. We headed the second half with a four point lead and Utah is going to have to start passing the ball soon, right? And it was almost another pick for Cameron. Now we see why they're running it so much. Quarterback is definitely the weak link on this team, but he finds the bouncer out. We cannot give him that much time. Look at those roadblocks dude on the sidelines. All right, this is the drive. We cannot let Utah get anything out of this. 
And Emmanuel Turner gonna bait up that corner route, but cannot come up with it. I read that so nice too, man. Utah has definitely come out trying to pass it a little bit more, and they try Richard Amos, who somehow does not come out with that pick. That's another one that might have gone to the bank. We gotta have those, bro. But Utah going with an in route here somehow, some way. Emmanuel Turner gets the pick. This man is absolutely ridiculous. Emmanuel Turner has been impossibly better this season than he was last year, and Michael Crow gonna come up with a pick here, a shot to take it to the crib. That speedy running back is able to hawk him down. That's still a huge field goal. Massive difference between a seven and four point lead. Very important that this defense continues to stay disciplined as we head to the fourth quarter, clinging to a seven point lead. It'll be a big time third and eight for Utah. And it looked like their tight end was open. Instead, the quarterback has to chuck it into no man's land. We got just enough pressure to affect that throw. And Utah continuing to be conservative with the punting game. Richard Amos was close on the last one, but this time he goes nowhere. And our defense has four picks despite limited opportunities. It hasn't been as flashy, but this has been one of the best games of the dynasty for our defense. But right when I say that, bro, Richard Amos getting absolutely cooked to oblivion. But Utah really running low on time, not showing much of a sense of urgency. And they just go play action here. They have that open. I should have baited up that in route a little bit more. So here we go, man. Chances are we get a stop. We win the game. We give up a touchdown. We lose the game. And they keep just coming back to that comeback route. All right, let's see what this defense has really, really got. That's just a dump off. Keeter, you're so good at tackling, bro. We need you to make that tackle. Daniel Wood is going to tie up this game. All right, Richard Amos, this is where we need you more than ever, bro. Amos has had a wonderfully clutch career, and he has some space here. Going to have to use the speed break in a couple tackles, but can't quite do so it. Here it is, boys. Season potentially comes down to this drive, and they're trying Crowl on the out route. Crowl, bro. Crowl, come on, dude. That is one opportunity we really cannot afford to miss. And they're just going to try Cameron here. Cameron delivers, and he might have a shot at another pick six. He's going for the corner of the end zone, but gets hawked down at the two. Still a huge play from Cameron, bro. He has stepped up. Would have been really nice if he cribbed it, of course. So here we go. Gotta just hold down the fort for one minute. Utah just going to the slant. Why would you go to Emmanuel Turner there? Turner is gonna have a shot to crib this, and he does not get run down. Emmanuel Turner proving again and again that he's the best player in NCAA football history. And why not another one? Quarterback just serves him up. Look at the stats from this man. We will take a 13-point lead on the Utes. It was kind of looking like we were cooked, but Turner and Cameron save the day, and we come up with a huge win on the road against the number 16. That'll really boost us up in the playoff rankings. And yet another four-pick game from Emmanuel Turner, gunning for 60 picks on the season. Cameron was really the dude who made things shake today, though. Just beautiful coverage from a CPU linebacker. The schedule won't get any easier from here. We have a murderer's row coming up. Somehow we barely move off in the rankings, though. I don't know why the rankings hate us so much, dude. But here we go. This is definitely going to be one of the toughest games of the season. 99 overall, number 7 USC on the road. USC handed us a heartbreaking loss last year. And USC going with the screen here. I, I couldn't believe my eyes that they were doing that on third and one, so I didn't jump it. But we are able to get the tackle for loss. Man, that would have been a great start if we could have got the pick six. Instead, Amos going to take it deep in his own territory again. And yeah, that's why I don't hit that juke move, bro. Amos does not have the Perry Valentine juke. Amos has been like a good but not great returner. We're putting it away here and USC going after it. You know what? We'll take some free points there. Gonna have to drill this with the wind against us though. And that looks pretty wobbly. It's gonna be short. I don't know if I hit that wrong or what. But you know, that's okay. Those were cheap points anyway. Cameron almost getting a pick there. He has been amazing in pass coverage. I should mention, man, Cameron's a linebacker, but he's like a converted linebacker. He's 92 speed and they're tossing it up to the corner route here. Richard Amos plays that beautifully and is able to get us right back into field goal range. This time our kicker should have the leg for it. It was a little bit closer than I maybe hoped, though. I'm really liking how this team's coming out in this game, man. Don't think this quarterback has a single completion yard on the day, actually. The thing that got us from a 10-win team to a playoff team was the fact that our linebackers really stepped up last year. And USC just chucking it up deep here. That's Eric Ward all over that. Ward has been excellent in the slot cornerback position, man. He's proven to be another quietly big piece on this team. Look at how we've locked these dudes up so far. I don't want to jinx it, bro. This halfback could still break off a big play. But Emmanuel Turner getting the pick on the slant route. We haven't quite had enough space to get those pick sixes today. But we love to see that. Four turnovers already. That one will give us a nice little six point lead. And hey, I sim the kickoff. They fumbled it, I guess. So we will most certainly take another free three point. And this is usually kind of a pivotal point in the game. Will we lock them down before halftime or will they cut down on our lead? They almost throw a manual turner a pick on the stick. Probably would have ended the game if we could have cribbed that. We'll see what happens here. Third down and short. And they have the slant. Frederick lays down a big hit, but not big enough. All right, 
right, so a field goal is fine here. We cannot give up a touchdown. I know you hear me say that a lot. But it remains as true as it was the first time I said it. And Keeter, don't swat that ball away. Let Emmanuel Turner get the pick, bro. USC just going with deep shots here. They're going to try Crowell here, who spots up. But once again, can't quite come down with the pick. That's fine, man, as long as we're swatting those things away. And he's getting tried again. This time, he absolutely Odell's that catch. Quarterback cannot believe it. Dude, Crowell has been getting some wicked animations, too. But I am A-OK -okay with heading the halftime of 9 to zip. I feel like we've honestly played even better than the score indicates. And Michael Crowell is just getting served up today. He turns around on this one. Might have a shot to take it to the crib, but not quite able to outrun the quarterback. That's seven turnovers for USC, which is crazy. Surprising that we don't have more points. We just gotta keep doing our thing, man. USC's really only threatened one time. Manual Turner laying the pipe on Malachi Nelson. Not sure if that was the right expression there. Anyways, we got a second and long. And that's just curls. Nowhere for the quarterback to go except the running back back but that'll be short all right here's where we got to put him in the cage third and four and they're just going with the drag turner trying to get the pick feels like we've held a lot of quarterbacks to an under 50 completion percentage this year today is no exception to that and turner just late to get that bounce route should have hit it a little sooner all right so trojans finally putting something together starting to get flashbacks to last year's choke but man our dns have been playing great this year nice job by cody freeman to trip him up you've gotten a lot more athletic there this year and dude is just trying amos amos misses more of those interceptions than anyone i've ever seen Scene, bro. That should be a pick 1 billion percent. And unfortunately, Eric Ward getting cooked there on the corner route. All right, man. So we're starting to get in the danger zone. USC could turn it up real quick here. But we are able to hock down this quarterback. Quarterback is really the reason we've been winning. He's not that good. So here we go. USC got two shots again to the end zone. And that looks like slants. Nope. It's just curls. We need some kind of pass rush here, fellas. We make the quarterback just uncomfortable enough. The fourth and goal game on the line. It looks like USC going with an out route on fourth down. Just got a box that up on the other side but crowd just inches away from that man all right so we need to take this onside kick into field goal range howard is gonna recover it and that'll be pretty close look at that stat line from our defense dude all right so this is a long one into the wind 55 yards and our kicker is going to miss it bro please tell me we are not gonna choke against usc two years in a row it's all on the corners here can't give up anything dumb is usc not even going to hurry up here just content to burn time off the clock and they're going with the halfback screen we can't quite get to it both times they've run that and I have just not expected it at all. We'll see what we cook up here on second and long. They try Amos and he is cooked. But we are really going to have another one of these games, bro. Literally anything could happen here. USC has an in route going on. They have all day in the pocket. It'll just throw it away. I'm just going to hop on Cuter here. Don't want to give up anything stupid deep, but they have the out route just wide open. I should have stayed on Turner, bro. Now we are really in trouble. USC threatening to score here. And they're just going for the back of the end zone. Dude doesn't get his foot in. That was scary. I don't know why he tried to double tap. And USC just going with the out route again. This time we have a man there. Frederick making one of the biggest plays of his career as he is going to take this all the way to the bank. Let's go, man. I love Eric Frederick. I actually think he's the one who choked against USC last year. So if so, a big redemption moment for him. We are going to escape USC by the skin of our teeth. Why not another pick for Emmanuel Turner? And Frederick is going to pick that out of the sky for his second pick. He might actually have a shot to crib this, getting around a few guys and getting a block. That won't quite happen for him. That's okay, man. We escape USC with a close win. As our two safeties came up big, Crow also had two picks, Amos with one. So that win moves us up to number 11. Somehow we're still behind teams like Minnesota. Like, why? Bro? We have definitely played one of the hardest schedules in the country. Going on the road to three top 10 teams. And we are going to have another one today against number three, Oregon. Here we go, fellas. A game with huge playoff implications. And Emmanuel Turner starting this out with a big hit. Eisman winner looking to come up big on the big stage again today. We got a third down out the gates. I did not step to that corner out soon enough. Really, we need Frederick to make that play, man. He is just standing there. All right, so we'll see what we got here. Oregon is going four verts and just chucking it up deep to Cameron. Great play to swat that away. But he is bummed out he didn't make the pick. That's the mark of a great player right there. And this time, Cameron gets cooked. I don't know what happened with Frederick there. I can give him a little bit of forgiveness after last week, but it's not going to be good if Oregon starts out with a touchdown. It's been a methodical drive from Oregon, but on third down, they just drop it off. Off. We'll take that, I guess. So the Ducks will start it out with a three-zip lead. And let's see what Richard Amos has got today. Unfortunately, Amos is not able to do anything at all with that one. So we're going to have to punt it here. But Oregon getting a little bit too excited going after the ball, and that'll be a muff. We end up recovering. So a nice free three points for us there. Our kicker's kicks continue to look a bit wobbly. We have to take whatever we can get against the number three team in the country. And Cameron is going to come up with the pick here. I don't know what the quarterback was doing, but Mike Cameron takes it to the crib. What an insane 
insane season from him, bro. Hamlin was great last year, but he has really stepped up this year. I do not know that we would be 5-1 and one without him. We gotta make sure the Ducks don't get anything before halftime. We're gonna just go in four verts here. They are gonna try Michael Crow, who continues to be great this year. I was hoping we'd get in a field goal range, but he gets tripped up. I'm glad I put Crow in that position, man. He just knows how to make plays on the ball. And now the Ducks definitely have a chance to get in a field goal range. Just going with verts again, and they're chucking it up deep for Amos. He will swat it away. That's why he's at that other cornerback position, man. His coverage is good, but he doesn't have the hands. All right, boys, just gotta make sure nothing silly happens here. He's gonna chuck that up a little bit short of the end zone, and Amos said, you see my hands here. You see my hands. We get four turnovers on the half. Pretty good. Our defense has made a prolific Oregon offense look not very good. They're hanging around in this one. Hoping we can make a play to take a two-score lead. As their quarterback breaking hella tackles, Michael Crow is finally able to sit him down. That is what we cannot have, man. A faster player does that, he might be gone. And Oregon picking up the first down. That comeback route just crushes every time. The good thing about the way Oregon plays offense is a ton of time just drains off the clock. And Emmanuel Turner says, you're not gonna break the tackle this time. Absolutely pinwheels, dude. Turner's had a quiet day, so that's good to see. Alright, on third down, they're running this formation. We're gonna try to get Crowell a pick here, but I baited that up. Not quite right. I think dude just throws it in the turf. We hold him off for the time being. I feel like we need points, though. Gonna hit that back juke. These dudes are just too fast, though. That guy's probably 99 speed. Alright, we'll have a big time third and seven. Oregon deciding to spread it out. Which definitely seems to be the tactic against our defense. Frederick tries to make the tackle, but they're gonna give that to him. And oh, great. Cameron is hurt. I don't know why he was holding his leg, because he's got a concussion. With him out, I think we're gonna stick with the quarters package here down the stretch. That does, of course, make the run a little bit easier. As Oregon, like USC, not showing that sense of urgency. They are gonna chuck it up here, though, and that is Crow continuing to be excellent. Oregon's coach is looking really pissed off on the sidelines. This quarterback has had quite the day. This team just has a habit of making good quarterbacks look really, really bad. He's gonna have all day here, though, and somehow that's gonna turn into a completion. Come on, bro. The Ducks are right back in business here. Still not going with that hurry up, but somehow dude is gonna catch that. Breaking out of there, trucking a couple of guys, and just like that, Oregon threatening. Alright, so we'll see what happens here. Just a minute left, and dude is going deep for the end zone. I left our guy there. I thought he would cover it up, but he totally overruns it. We'll see what Amos can do here. Needs something here, bro, and he has some space. Gonna have to hit the span trying to make it happen, but we cannot. So all Oregon needs to win this game is a field goal. Thankfully, this time we get a sack. We could potentially have a chance to get the ball back here. And dude, they just throw it right to Crow. He was turned around for some reason. All right, so huge play, third and 10. I don't know what Oregon's going with here. Looks like that's a slant and Eric Ward all over it. Could have easily been a pick. Amos gonna get the chance to return it here though. He's had some clutch return moments in his career for sure. He's gonna have to hit the back juke and he's got a little bit of space. Gotta get out to around the 35 and he is loose. There's one second on the clock, and I was just barely able to get out of bounds on time. Almost lost track of it. We got a 47-yard field goal to win, and we might have to kick this ice. Highest pressure kick of the dynasty here. The rain pouring down in an 8-mile-per-hour wind. Our kicker is going to make it. We escape Oregon with the win, thanks to Amos's clutch return. Michael Crow, player of the game with two picks. As we end the Ducks' undefeated season. This team has bounced back from the week one loss absolutely beautifully. We get a few more commits after that dub. So tune into the next vid to see if we can close out with a Big Ten championship and a college football playoff berth. I'll see y'all then. Peace.